Here in Unit 1, Section 8, we're going to wrap up our discussion of atomic structure by looking at some more patterns on the periodic table. Now, if you've taken a first year chemistry class, you've probably learned about some of these before. Our first pattern that we're going to look at is the pattern of valence electrons for representative elements on the periodic table. And if you took first year chemistry, you might remember that all these elements in group 1 over here have one valence electron. And likewise in group 2, they all have two valence electrons. Group 13, right here, they'll all have three valence electrons. Group 14, they have four, and it kind of goes on like that. Group 15 has five, group 16 has six, group 17 has seven, uh, group eight, except for helium, of course, will have eight valence electrons. In fact, anything that has eight valence electrons, we call that an octet. And we'll talk more about that in Unit 2. So that is a pattern that you want to keep in mind. Now, because of those valence electrons, this also uh, leads into a pattern of ionic charges for the ions of those representative elements. And so as you look at the table, that tells us that pretty much all these ions of group 1 elements are going to have a charge of positive 1. And all the ions of the group 2 elements will be positive 2. And a lot of these group 13 elements will have positive 3 charges. If we go from the other side of the table, the halogens will pretty much all make ions that have a negative 1 charge. And most of your oxygen group elements will make ions that have a negative 2 charge. And a lot of your uh, group 15 elements over here, the ones uh, that start with nitrogen group there, those will generally make a negative 3 charge. And so that's a pattern. You can, can predict that based on the periodic table. Now, because of this very predictable pattern and the fact that so many of these elements in the same group share the same charge, they're often going to make compounds that behave very similar to each other. So for example, if we think of group 2 oxides, I just chose three of these here kind of at random. We have uh, calcium and magnesium and strontium oxides here. Uh, all three of those metals are in group 2. And if you look at these three solids, chemically they're actually rather similar to each other. Now of course there are some differences, and we'll talk about that as we move through this course, but generally speaking, if you look at them, how they behave chemically, they're pretty close to each other chemically. And that's because they have these same groups. You have uh, the calcium, strontium, magne magnesium, they're all in the same group, so they're going to behave very similar to each other chemically. Now, Let's wrap this up by talking about the difference in these electrons. Here are some terms that we've used already, but let's just kind of get a definition there. When we talk about valence electrons, those are the electrons in the outermost occupied energy level of an atom. The core electrons are all the others. Those are your electrons in the, the inside energy levels. So uh, we talk about valence electrons a lot because those are the ones that are doing something. Those are the electrons that get donated or shared or, or something in a reaction. Core electrons don't do a whole lot. Now, if we go back to our PES diagram that we looked at earlier in this unit, we can see that the valence electrons are bound much less tightly to the nucleus than the core electrons are. In fact, we know that the 4s electrons, these, these right here, those are your valence electrons. And notice how small that number is compared to the others. 0.979. I'm going to leave off the, the exponent there. We'll just say 0.979 and compare that to the others. That's about, you know, one-fourth of the energy that's required to, to take away these 3p electrons. It's about four times larger over here. In some cases, if you want to compare your valence electrons to the 1s electrons, those are very close in to the nucleus. We're talking about 
those electrons are bound hundreds of times, over 600 times more tightly. Look at that energy there. So yeah, those valence electrons are bound with much less energy than the core electrons are. And as a result, it's a whole lot easier to remove valence electrons from an atom than it is to pull those core electrons away. My name is Jeremy Krug. I hope you've enjoyed this Unit 1 complete uh, course discussion here in AP Chemistry. Hope you join me for Unit 2. I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks for watching.